Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to April the 17th. All right, very nice to see you. How was your day? Yes. It was good? Okay. Well, we thank God for that. Amen. I want you to learn to thank God for everything that's good. Yes. Amen. Your health, your wealth, however large or small it may be, your sanity, just basic life, safety on the road, back and forth, none of that is guaranteed. Let's learn, make it a behavior, a thinking pattern to thank God for everything. So I'm very grateful for the privilege to be with you. It really is a privilege to be here night after night. This is the second night of the last week. I believe we have five or six more nights at most. We began April 2nd. This is April 17. May God bless all of us who will try to endure unto the end. Amen. They're the ones that will be what? Saved. All right. Who's with us tonight for the first time? Ah, God bless you. God bless you. I saw some hands to my left. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Ah, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. And God bless you and your families. Bless your health. Bless your work. And grant you those things that you do not now have, but you desire so much. Our subject for this evening is thinking like Nebuchadnezzar. What did I say? Thinking like Nebuchadnezzar. Well, I thought to call it the mind of a king. I thought to call it royal thinking. Or I might to call it royal and wrong. Which one do you like? <laughs> Which one do you like? Tell me. Royal and wrong. Okay, that's the title for this evening. Thank you, sister or brother, whoever it was. Royal and wrong. Before I begin, let's do what's right. <laughs> Favor number one, you have a cell phone. May I see the hands of those who have cell phones? Raise your hands. Hands up. Please turn them off. Not on vibrate, off. Please, please, don't rebel in church. Don't sneak around sending text messages to somebody. Uh, just turn them off. When you're asleep, you don't know who's trying to call you. And it doesn't bother you at all. So let's show God some slack, as we say in the vernacular, and do all we can to avoid any disturbance. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, please pray for me. And what I'd like you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. And that's based on Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. That is what I desire so earnestly. And favor number three, please think. Let's use our minds God has given us and let us think. The religion of the Bible is a thinking person's religion. Let's bow our heads now and pray. Loving Father in heaven, thank you, dear God, for your constant goodness to us. Your word says in Psalm 100 verse 5, For the Lord is good. And Father, you are good and we thank you for that. Because of your goodness, you've watched over us today. Because of your goodness, you've brought us safely. And because of your goodness, dear Father, we're able to hear the word and understand it. Out of your goodness, Father, send us your spirit, that he may enlighten our minds. Out of your goodness, dear God, take possession of me and speak through me. And as your sons and your daughters pray, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Hear their prayer and answer them, I pray, with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Royal and wrong. Let's go to Daniel chapter 4. We shall begin reading at verse 29. Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 29. In the process of this presentation, as you can see, I will be reverting to the screen. Well, let's bring the screen down now, so it's not brought down in the middle of the presentation. So whoever has the expertise, please bring that thing. All right, there, here it comes. Okay. Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 29. And at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Who is that he? Nebuchadnezzar. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that God has built? Now, what did he say? Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Notice the my and the my and the I. That's 
the royal thinking of Nebuchadnezzar. But God was about to let him know in a very serious way that he might have been royal, but he was royally wrong. The Bible says, while the word was where? In his mouth. There fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, the word is what? Spoken to thee or concerning thee. The kingdom shall be what? Departed. Departed. The kingdom is departed from thee. They shall drive thee from men. You will no longer live among people. And they shall make thee the what? Thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Thou shalt eat grass. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times, meaning seven years, shall pass over thee. What's the next word? Until. Until, until thou know. Until thou know what? That the Most High does what? Ruleth in the what? Kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. By the way, as Christians, you and I need to understand that. You know, we get all wrapped up in Republicans and Democrats. That's so why churches split because they big arguments around election time. How could you vote for Bush? How could you vote for Obama? How could you vote for Clinton? How could they? Listen to me. It is God who has the final say who sits in that White House. And so several of the Adventist Christians must display an intelligence not popularly seen. While others fight and argue and break friendships, we understand the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. The word kings mean rulers. God sets people up for his purpose and sets them down. We have to be intelligent seven the Adventists. You don't get caught up in political arguments. Amen. It's not you who put someone in the, the White House Amen. or the throne of England or wherever. It is God who says okay or no. Amen. When God is ready for you to be out, no one can keep you in. Amen. When God wants you in, no one can keep you out. Amen. We need to remember that on a day-to-day -day basis as we work, as we study, as we do whatever we do. If God sees you on your job and you are faithful, Full, like Joseph who was a slave in Egypt, like Daniel who was a captive in Egypt, like the three Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, who were captives. They were of the wrong ethnic group, but they rose to the highest because God wanted them there. Somebody say amen. amen. It has little to do with your color. Amen. Is your life pleasing to God? Yes. And if it is, God will take you places where no one can stop you. Amen. So please don't get caught up in color again. Because I'm black, I wasn't promoted. If God wanted you promoted, you would have been. <laughs> because I'm white, I can't do this. Mm -mm. Your destiny is in God's hand. Amen. Your duty is to represent God. Amen. And then God will represent you. Amen. You don't like what I just said. Amen. Don't lead your life by what sociologists say. Let God, be the, the, let God be the place where the buck of your life stops. Yes. And so when God was before Pilate, I need to extend this a little longer, because some of you still not swallowing what I'm saying. Pilate said to Jesus, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, John 19, 11, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Jesus understood his life was not in the hands of Pilate. He was carrying out his father's wishes. Amen. So whether you like it or not, be an intelligent Christian. Amen. God is your politician. Amen. You have a duty to perform, perform it, but don't go crazy. Amen. Don't stop speaking to someone who's a Democrat because you're a Republican Amen. and then you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> And so Nebuchadnezzar said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom, by the might of my power, and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in his mouth, yes. there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king of Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men. You won't live with people, you live with animals. Thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee eat grass as oxen. 
and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know. Until you know your thinking is royal but wrong. Nebuchadnezzar's problem is our problem. We go for the week, let's say you're the supervisor of the job, and maybe your chest is a little higher than those beneath you. Is this not the office that I run? Like the Nebuchadnezzar. Um, am I not the man who when I walk, people tremble in the cubicles? <laughs> am I not he or she who has the power to fire and hire at my pleasure? Some of us walk around like that. We don't say it, but we don't have to say it. It's in the heart. It emerges and it stains the behavior and the speech. And someone who's um, observant can detect, you know, this person is on a power trip. God is in heaven saying, how much more patience was I demonstrate to this person? Doesn't he or she understand? I didn't put you there to be a slave driver. I put you there to represent me. And if it so pleases me, I can remove you. Amen. God is not dependent on us. We are dependent on him. So we continue with royal and wrong. It's not this great Babylon. God put him in his place. God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to understand, I am the controlling power. Amen. Amen. The money that you needed, Nebuchadnezzar, to build great Babylon belongs to me. Mm -hmm. right. The Bible says, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the fullness means all the precious metals. Amen. What's the U.S. currency based on? Gold. Where do we keep all our gold? Okay. <laughs> Some brother went to high level and said nothing. But at a secular level, we say gold. Where's all that gold stored? You know, it is the most heavily guarded place possibly on earth. You know, there are tanks, maybe 35,000 soldiers guard that place. Some high-level politicians have never even seen the inside of Fort Knox. It is so heavily guarded. You know what God says? That's mine. That's mine. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says God. In Psalm 50, reading from verse 10, the Bible says, I know every beast of the field, and the cattle upon a thousand hills are Mine. I know every fowl, all the fowls of the mountain, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Verse 12, if I were hungry, says God, I would not tell you. Amen. So what does he mean? I am not dependent on you, says God, for food. If I am hungry, I feed myself. Why? For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Job chapter 41. Verse 11, the second half of that verse said, Whatsoever is under the heavens belongs to me. It's mine, says God. Everything under the heavens, what does that include? Everything. Mars, Pluto, that galaxy, that galaxy, that galaxy. There's nothing above God. So when God says, Whatsoever is under the high heaven, He does not simply mean this atom of a world, He means the entire universe. Amen. Mine. Nebuchadnezzar needed to understand that. Listen to me. You and I must understand that. This is not symbolic language. This is literal. The only thing God does not own by right is our sins. Amen. Those are ours by right. But Christ assumes them, suffers for us, Amen. that he might save us and make us like him as far as his righteousness is concerned. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. The Bible says, but who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to offer after this sort, so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. When you give God a nickel, it was already his before you gave Thank it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now what I'm saying runs contrary to the way the mind thinks. Yes. The carnal mind says, this is mine. The carnal mind says, I don't owe anybody anything. The carnal mind says God has no right to meddle in my affairs. Now what am I getting to? 
how does God deal with this mindset?